today we traverse tacos and tales from, I have no more alliteration, from the past, from my past, tales from my past, working in a pizzeria, restaurant, well, not a pizzeria, working in a whole ass restaurant that served mainly pizza, but other dishes too. Let's get into this. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods, yeah. The chicken taco crave today is super real. So we got all the fixings, but we're switching it up with the cheesy blasted taco shells. I never really go down this route. I usually keep it traditional and classic. Also, a little secret sauce there, don't mind that. But we got the cheesy blasted taco shells. We're gonna make the chicken fajita style flavor. And then all the fixings to make a few different variations of chicken tacos. We're operating on the quick fast system today. We got our chicken chunked. We got to season that and get it cooked. And then we got our shreddy letty here. We got a prep plate mise en place. We got our green onions. We got our tomato chunks and our fine grated Taco Bell-esque cheddar cheese. Let's get this seasoned and into the air fryer real quick. And then we're building. All right, we're going in with the fajita mix today. 25% less sodium. So we're watch watching our sodium intake around here, apparently. It's just all they had. I'm kidding. I never watch my sodium intake. I eat recklessly. We know this. But anyways, this seasoning coated on. And then of course, we need to have, and then of course we need to have a little bit of oil to have that fat in there so that it crisps up nice in the air fryer. So we get that crispy golden exterior, right? So oil and seasoning. A little marinade, if you will. All right, into the fresh, clean air fryer. We do a little bit of separation station here to try to get them so they don't completely clump together. And then we go high 400, as high as she goes, for maybe about 20 minutes. And that should be perfect chicken for our tacos. All right, 15 minutes later, out the air fryer, this is what we're looking at. Our perfect. Fajita seasoned style chicken. I'd say that's pretty nice. How about you? Mmm, tastes good too. Well, it's about that time. It's time to build five different variations. So, adhesive sour cream down first. Taco one. They're all gonna have lettuce and cheese, that's for sure. Sour cream, lettuce, and cheese is a requirement. But lettuce and our cheese. Next adhesive layer, and then our chicken chunks. And on this one, we're gonna go with the salsa. A little bit of salsa. Green onion, and our chopped tomato. And that'll be taco one. This one, we're coming in with our Popeyes black and ranch we do tomatoes and we do green onions and that's taco two all right taco three base foundations sour cream some green onions and then we're going to keep this one simple with some pickled jalapenos and why not a couple little tomatoes on this one too Taco three. Taco four, we're just gonna introduce a little Frank's Red Hot for this one. And once again, our tomatoes and green onions. Taco five is gonna be an absolutely everything taco. All the different sauces, the sour cream, the black and ranch, the salsa, a tiny bit of Frank's, and then our tomato and a little bit of green onion that we have left here. And that's it, five tacos, baby. Final reveal, five delicious variations of chicken taco in all their glory. I'm drooling, let's eat. So you saw it come together, tacos various ways with a cheesy blaster shell, something I generally don't do, but they intrigued my mind. Uh, I'm ready to get into this and maybe discuss some pictures from my past on my Facebook 
which is secretly hidden out in the world. And uh, I don't know, pictures are worth thousands of words. So maybe I'll just give you a little story time about some of these pictures and a time in my life back in Toronto when life was like, I don't know, that was probably the highlights of my life. But who knows what's to come in the future, but still, those were amazing times. Uh, before we do any more, we must pour. And we're rocking with a, uh, a rare outlaw today, we might say. And that's a black cherry soda. I, I secretly love black cherry. It's very rare that I pick up a black cherry. But when I do, I'm always reminded that a black cherry soda is delicious. Look at that. A little crimson plum purple red type type pour up type vibe you know what I mean bloodthirsty <laughs> inaugural it's delicious it reminds me of my childhood honestly it reminds me of uh, being very young like at uh, sports activities and stuff and you know all that stuff so anyways let's get into a bite of one of these tacos let's try to figure out this this focus here I will <laughs> I will have to be consulting my phone a bit here because there's multiple pictures all from the same night by the way this is a Christmas party uh, from a restaurant that I worked at for almost three years I made some great friends there I learned a ton about the industry a ton about uh, systematics uh, optimization operation just how to really run a, a fluent machine of a business that like everybody has their little cog role to play, but we all do it well and very successful. And we all made good money and the, 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 the independent place became like a chain, essentially not a chain, but you know, they ended up having five locations and became very successful. So we'll start with <laughs> this picture I'll put up here. <laughs> On the night of the Christmas party, this is me and one of my favorite co-workers. A lot, like most of my co-workers were, were favorites. A lots were favorites. But this is one of my favorite, favorite co-workers. And there's a story behind her and I. Um, her name is Megan. <laughs> and I'm all done up with the suit and the Christmas-esque, almost Kevin, Kevin uh, McAllister type shirt and the ducks on the tie and that. And then I got, <laughs> I got Megan... <laughs> wrapped around my arm and me and Megan had this interesting relationship and I will unveil that here as I eat from the same way that I built these left to right so they're all in order and uh, we'll get a bite and then we'll tell tales of this time in my life so here we go let's go and get messy let's go and get sloppy So Megan was a couple years older than me, very much traveled, educated, a uh, she had a certain high level aesthetic to her in her taste in life very Parisian, very crusty loaves of bread, very coffee, like latte art, dressed well, you know, highbrow a little bit. Still chill, still down to earth. And we had such a great connection, but it was strange because she was a server. I was a busser at the time. And in the restaurant, during service, you'd have to keep up with what's called folds. And folds are linen. 
at a station with this polished silverware. And this station was directly at the back of the restaurant, basically. Just beside the furthest table, the party table, the type the table that could accommodate anywhere between six and ten people type thing. And everything was behind you. So you could have your back to the restaurant. And your face to the kitchen. Because it was an open concept kitchen. And the folds area where we would wrap silverware into napkins to set the tables. Um, <laughs> was directly in front of gar manger, gar manger being salads. And so whoever was working salads, you'd often have a lot of banter with them. For me, it was, and you'll see him in the later picture, his name was Danny. Me and Danny. <laughs> oh man, me and Danny. We used to chop it up so hard. Oh, maybe he's not in that picture. I think he, Danny came after. But anyways, Danny was the best. He produced music. He's a beat maker and stuff. DeMarc will be in the picture I'm going to show as well. But um, he used to chop it up with whoever's on salads. And then the pass was to the right. So there was a lot of activity there. But it was basically a zone where you would go to almost... <laughs> commune with random other employees and you'd stand beside each other and one would do the polishing the spritzing and the polishing and one would do the wrapping and the folding of the of the fold for the mise en place so you could set the table and uh me and may <laughs> used to spend so much time doing folds together because we had it like we just had a good connection and we used to do these things called hypothetical weigh-ins. And I created the term. I made it up. I got her addicted to it. And it's basically... In order to entertain ourselves, you would look at certain tables and you would come up with hypothetical scenarios almost telling stories to each other about like okay hypothetical in that table like he's a banker she's a this she's a foot model who stays at home they're swingers they this they that like <laughs> we would just, we would narrativize stories about guests or diners' lives and be like, who's dating who? Like, who's got the drama? What's the controversy? Like, we would just make up hypotheticals about tables to entertain ourselves. Not to be pricks or judge people. It was just more like we're bored at work and we like making up these fantastical stories to narrati narrativize people that we have no idea who they really are in real life other than the fact that we're serving them and clearing their plates and all that stuff, right? So me and Megan used to play hypothetical weigh-ins all the time and then somewhere along the way we almost had like a I don't know how to explain it we had this like soul connection and there was a tiny bit of sexual connection but it wasn't enough to ever move forward with anything we became more like uh I don't know, I don't want to say brotherly, sisterly, but... Because that sounds weird. We just had this mutual respect. Where I think we both kind of found each other attractive, but not in that way. 
mentally we were definitely attracted to each other in terms of like <laughs> having the best times chatting at work. And I always think back <laughs> to my time and my convos with Megan in a very fond, fond way. And she's still very much the same. I still follow her on Instagram and she's still traveling and still has her, her way about her, her, her highbrow, high-end kind of aesthetic. Um, very much... I don't know, it's like, like clean lines and Tuscany, and like that type of person, you know what I mean? She's just like very much like that. But I really enjoyed her as a person. All right, let's cleanse this palette with some little black chair. So far, these tacos are absolutely amazing. I might actually work from this side in and end with the jalapeno one because I know the jalapeno one's going to light me up. But let's put up a next picture <laughs> from the same night. Because this is our Christmas party, and I had many Christmas parties with this company. Well, three. But uh, the next one will be, I'll put up, <laughs> it's called, One of These Things Is Not Like The Other. <laughs> and this is where I thought Danny was going to be, because Danny is a black male. But this is me, Mac Miller, <laughs> the Mac Miller of the industry, with all my friends who are of color black people now this is uh, and i'll put it over here this is shella shella polino she was a hostess uh, quite a bit younger than us hilarious great vibes artist as well demarca antonio campbell who's kind of gripping her they had a little thing going but she also was doing shit secretly on the side with the guy behind me that uh, you could barely see him but that's shoddy crispy jr also a beat maker artist <laughs> De demark was an artist as well, wrapped and stuff. And then Danny was his, his boy. Danny got the job way later though. So Danny wasn't here yet. And then behind that was Dexter. <laughs> and he was mixed, white and black. His mom was white, dad black. And Dexter was like my one of my best friends. Like we spent so many nights together. He's gay. And his uh, boyfriend at the time was actually Jade Hassoon whom I partied with tons at their condo. And Jade Hassoon is actually Meliorn from the Netflix show Shadowhunters. And before he was Meliorn of Shadowhunters, Jade used to talk about manifestation and positive thought and vibration and meditation and stuff. And he's like, I know I'm going to be successful. It's just a matter of when and, and how. But he's like, I'm manifesting it. I meditate every day. I see my future. I envision it. And he made it happen. So pretty crazy. But Dexter... So I was always trying to get at me, but the joke of this is one of these things is not like the other. So I'm the token white guy, and underneath <laughs> the photo on Facebook, it says, and that's why I'm pointing at myself. I'm like, I'm the token white guy, but I loved all of these people through and through so much. So much. Dexter, most specifically, because Dexter was like my best friend, and he was, he's a musician as well, made music. They're my people. They're creatives. Beat makers, lyricists, poets, people who create. So, <laughs> DeMarc used to work stove, and I used to sneak around <laughs> behind the, uh, the stone oven. And DeMarc would be on stove, and he was always making meatballs. Well, he was on stove fryer. So he was always whipping up meatballs because we had these amazing meatballs. They were sous vide. They were a, a triple meat blend, so beef, lamb, pork. Actually, veal lamb pork, which is veal being young beef. And then they were sous vide, which is a cooking technique in water and uh, backpack bags. 
and then they were just brought to temperature with like this beautiful arrabbiata sauce and then uh, a fire like a flame grilled toasted piece of uh, sourdough crostini rubbed with garlic and oil and salt and then finish with uh, grana padano so parmesan reggiano essentially but just a different you know version or whatever but <laughs> but i'd always sneak around back and get demar to hook me like a meatball when i was starving during service <laughs> and then sometimes we just kick a freestyle <laughs> like near the walk-in i'd be like oh yo yo and he'd show me too. he's like i'm working on check this song i'm working on i'd be like oh, oh check this song i'm working on we'd show each other our tracks i did it with dexter too i did it with danny and uh the dude behind me that you can barely see shoddy crispy he was he was more stealth. He was super, he reminded me of like Big Sean kind of, but he was very like, he was very calculated and smooth and like demure with the shits. Like he didn't, he never revealed too much, which I've always respected people that have that restraint in their life that like, you don't need to know any and everything about me, but just the tidbits that I allow. Because I'm such a fucking loud mouth. <laughs> but yeah, those were like my, my peoples. And the person who said one of these things is not like the other was actually this bartender who was a couple years older than me. Her name was Candice, Candice Nerona. She's an in, uh, Indian uh, woman. And she was a couple years older than me at the time. Still, obviously, is because she's a couple years older than me. But she was just like, one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> the token white guy. All right. And then, so, okay. So, from this same night, we'll move into another picture I'll put out. There's two I can put up. And this is just the crew. So, I'll put up this one right here. You can see. And then, so, beside me is Leanne. Me and Leanne had sick vibes too. She's a hostess. And then my manager beside her, Steph. Stephanie Butt, B U T T. Her last name is Butt. And then Megan. And then Matthew. And <coughs> Matthew also worked at, randomly before I worked with him, he worked with my sister at Jack Astor's. And then Nancy and her little froofy, uh, I don't know what's that, uh, like a. a, a What's that uh, <laughs> for ballet? A tutu, kind of like a furfy tutu. And then down in the bottom is Billy, who is a bartender. Billy was an interesting character. He was fun at times, cool at times, and then super serious and moody and shitty at times. And then in the middle is Sean, and Sean was a very flamboyant gay man who was a high performer, very on point, drank a lot of like press juices, and made a lot of good money because he had such a crazy outward personality. And he one time told me that <laughs> because he's gay, he's like, vaginas look like Venus flytraps. And they disgust me. <laughs> I will never forget when he told me that. And then beside him is Shannon. And Shannon is like, you know those people who are just so customer service, but like they they have this calm, natural energy that they're designed to be that person like that's what they're supposed to do in life is deal with people and they just put you at ease that's that's shannon shannon was like so naturally warm just so welcoming and so warm and like just grandma energy, mom energy. And that's why she was so good at, at her job is everybody who she served, like she had zero awkward vibes. It was always just like, I'm really here to take care of you.
And that's all I want to do today is take care of you the best I possibly can. And she just had that aura. There's some people like that. You can't explain it. And they always make amazing customer service people. So that was Shannon. I really like Shannon. Everybody's characters. And this is why I always loved restaurants in the service industry because, you know, by nature, I'm, I'm a people person as well. And I love forming connections and bonds with people and just getting to know them. And sure, there were times where some of these people you have a bit of tumultuousness with comes with the territory. But for the most part, pretty much all good. Like Nancy was such a, a, a coy, quiet, shy, white Japanese mix. But she used to sell consistently sell the most product and make the most in tips. Matt, who's beside her, also a completely, totally outgoing, flamboyant gay man who is on par with his shit in terms of selling. He would always try to battle her. And Sean, too, was really good at that. So the, the bubbly outgoing always wins in service industry. All right, one more photo. And a final taco. For another chunk of my crew. And this was the redhead is Emily. She was a late add to our team but she blended in really well. Uh, the woman behind kind of looking at me is Sarah. I'm not giving her last names, even though I know them. And Sarah was like, I think she's like in her early 40s at the time or late 30s. And she's stunningly beautiful, drop dead, gorgeous woman, but a mom had two kids, had her husband at home studying his for his PhD. And, oh man, Sarah was like, you just look at her and she could just light up an entire room just with just her, just how she looked, just her smile. And she was so nice. Sarah was the best. And then in front of me is uh, bartenders. Well, one was a busser before it was, well, they both were, they moved up the ranks, but they were bartenders when I was there, but Gwen is in the black dress, and then Jenica, looking like kind of Esmeralda, in the crushed uh, in the in the green crushed velvet, and Jenica was so super fun, very nice person, very eccentric, super kind of just whew, out there in a way, but awesome person, and Gwen was a difficult person to navigate because Gwen could she like like Billy she could have her days where she was fun and amicable and enjoyable and things like that and then there were days that she was on this like idealistic high horse where she would kind of be I don't know, like shitty and judgmental and be pissed off at you and like take her projections out on you when I think she was just having an internal bad day, like an anxiety or whatever she was dealing with, but she could switch on a dime. And I, I didn't like working with people like that. So I was fairly consistent in my demeanor when I was at work. Right. Generally pretty, pretty upbeat, happy, talkative, also head down, do my work, put, get, just like get into focus mode and just grind when it got crazy busy and you didn't have time to even think about talking to anybody. But for the most part, like I didn't, I'm not the type of person who like, there's some people at work in your job who just 
they think, especially when they're your fellow employee, it's not even a manager or a supervisor. There's employees at your same level that think that they can bitch at you or think that they can like boss you around. And I'm like, Hey, I wouldn't do it to you. So why are you doing it to me? Just because you're in a bad mood, you're in a tiff, you're spinning out, you're stressed. Don't take it out on me. Get off the floor, take five. Find a way to deal with it on your own terms. Then come back and we'll work. But don't start attacking me with shit that's like, it's not even my, it's you're projecting. Suck it up or go take a break. Because I'm not going to be demeaned, belittled, and treated like that. No, not happening. We're equals here. We're a team. We're supposed to be pushing through this stress together. So, yeah, that was a Christmas party. This picture in specific is after we went to one place, did photo shoot and all that, pre-drank, and then we went to another place and had our fun, like our whole night. But the people I just showed you, that's even, that's like not even half my crew, like half my restaurant crew. Like there's still another, at least half more people that I could go into detail about, like so many people. <clears throat> A lot of them on the other half. All great, good, fun people with their own quirks and quirks. We all have them, right? Everybody's got their character and their personality and their way about them. And you just need to know how to navigate that when you're in a work setting. But... Still, so many and so many that aren't in those photos are even like my tighter, who people I was like even way more tight with. Like, I oh, had so many names coming to mind. Like, oh man, Kristen, Brooke, Steph, mainly women. I, the women were mainly like, I just loved, I don't know, there's just something so much more interesting about hanging out with women. Especially, I don't know, in that in that work setting. But there's also a bunch of dudes that I was friends with too, so it's hard to say. Like Danny, oh man, when I think of Danny, I just laugh. You know that type of person when you walk into work and you make eye contact with and you literally don't have to even say a word to each other and you both just start like, <laughs> you just start cracking up because you know you get to have a shift with your, you like your, 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 that person who's the same energetic vibe of you, that was Danny for me. Like, so funny, dude. Like, we would just, I would just be doing folds, and I'd look up, and he'd look up from making a salad, and he'd go, and he'd just be like, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fun. Anyways, a shout out back to my past, five tacos, beautiful, delicious. The cheesy shells, nice little additive. They weren't too overpowering, which is nice. And uh, I would definitely do cheesy shells again. So till the next one you know to do, eat good, live well. Stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.